I'm going to give a short demonstration of the Firefly software. Um, I'm going to show how to build a simple protocol and then how uh, the steps you would go through in executing that protocol. Um, the screen that you see here is actually um, the design screen. So, I mean, this, if you look down this left panel here, there's two main sections, the design and then the execute. So design is all the, the, the part around building the protocol and execute is around running that. And then we've also got labware, we can put labware definitions in and then some system, uh, system area for kind of service and also kind of diagnostics and so on. Um, I'm going to focus mostly on the design part, um, but this could be uh, inaccessible to some users. Uh, if you choose to kind of lock the system down for certain users so that when they log in, they can only select and run protocols, then they would simply see the execute part and they would have very limited ability to, to do things. Here, I'm just looking at it from the point of view of a, an advanced user who has access to everything. Um, so I'm just going to run through um, the steps to actually build a simple protocol. So the first thing we're going to do is go down to the bottom panel here and add a plate. Um, and we've got choices of 96 and 384. And these are just the ones that I've got loaded here. There's a, a, there's a larger library that you can download these different plate definitions to, and you can build in your own plate definitions as well. Uh, I'm just going to use a, a 96 volt plate, and I'm going to select this BioRad 96 volt plate, and I'm going to select the whole plate and add that to the working list, which is called assets here. So this is essentially the things I'm going to be using. The protocol will build up in this left panel here. I'm also going to name that. So I'm going to call that DNA and I'm going to add a second plate, which again, I'm just going to use the same BioRad 96. Again, I'm going to select the whole plate and this one I'm going to call my cleanup plate. So I'll just name that. So you don't have to name them, but it just makes it easier to track things as you as you build the protocol. Um, I also want to use the dispenser on the system. So I'm going to add some reservoirs or in fact, I'm going to add one reservoir. Um, I'm going to select um, just one of the syringes to dispense some beads. So I'm going to call this beads. Um, you can use um, up to six syringes, but uh, it will obviously go faster if it's dispensing with syringes simultaneously. Um, but in this case, I just want to use a single syringe to keep the dead volumes down. Um, and you can have different reagents in different syringes, or you could have two of one and one of another. You've got any kind of combination that you want. Um, so I've now got the the, the initial things I need to start the process. So I'm going to add a step by clicking up here on the add step function. And that brings up the different um, modes of operation. So at the top, we've got kind of pipetting modes, then we've got dispensing modes. Uh, we've got um, things for moving plates into things like incubators, shakers, and so on. And then other such as pause, user interactions, and so on. So quite a simple menu to, to follow. Here, I want to use the dispense head. So I'm going to use the fill function which actually transfers across a whole plate. So I'm going to go from this reservoir into the DNA plate. So I'll just simply drag and drop them in. And there's a default volume of 10 microliters. I'm actually just going to increase that to 20. And uh, the rest of the parameters, as I scroll down here, are kind of the more advanced settings in terms of um, speeds, um, aspiration speeds, um, um, pre-aspirate, um, volumes and so on. These are pretty, these are kind of defaults in the dispenser um, and you can use this really straight, straight away without having to change any of these and use the standard settings. This is using the um, the positive displacement non-contact dispenser, which is very adaptable to, to work with different liquid types without needing to change uh, any of the settings. However, the settings are there and available um, if people want to fine tune them. So, so that is an option. It's not like you're completely locked down and not able to do any of that. But I'm just going to leave that at uh, the 20 microliters. Um, so I've got my dispense of beads to the DNA plate. Um, I now actually want to do a mix. Uh, I'm going to do that with pipetting head with some tips. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down to the bottom here and add some tips. Um, so let's put a tip box in. Um, the tip box, um, the default that's dropped in here is the 96. On the right here, I could change this. I could choose the 384 or 96 and what volume, but I'm actually going to stick with um, the 125, 96 that, I've, that, that is there as standard. Um, I am going to firstly put the tips on the head. So if I have a step, I'm going to load the tips and I simply drag that tip box in to show that I'm loading it onto the head. Um, and then I want to add a mix step. 
So I'm going to add the mix step. And the, what I want to mix is what I've just put in the DNA plate. So, okay, so now I've added my, my beads, I've loaded some tips, I've done the mix. Again, I can change the volumes here. So there's 25 mix cycles. I could change that to say 10 if I wanted to uh, um, shorter mix, mix volume. Um, I'll leave that at 10 for now, but you can change the parameters again here. Um, and again, there's a whole host of uh, fine tune settings that you can you can play with here, but I'm, I'm not going to um, bother with that for this short demo. Um, OK, so I've now mixed. Um, I now want to place that DNA plate onto a magnet. So I'm going to add a magnetic block here and um, just add that. And I now want to do a place on function. I'm going to place the plate onto the magnet. So I'm going to take that DNA plate and I'm going to drop it onto the magnet. And then I'm going to put a short pause in there. And so let's just put that pause step in. Now that's got a default time of 30 minutes, which is a little bit long for what I want here. So I'm going to put um, I think I'll just put 30 seconds in there. OK, so um, I'm now paused for 30 seconds and I know the final step just in this short demo is that I'm going to transfer um, the DNA from um, the initial plate to the cleanup plate. So I'm going to add a step. Um, first thing, I'm going to add some new tips. Um, so let's put another, let's put some clean tips on for this. Um, so let's have the tip box. I'm going to change the tips. So let's load the tips. I'm going to drag that tip box into here to change the tips for the new one. And then the final thing I want to do is I want to transfer from one plate to the other. So I'm going to use this copy step, which just takes everything from one place to the other. Um, and I simply want to go, um, I want to go to this cleanup plate. I'm going to put that in and just go up and get my DNA plate and drop that in. And you can see because I'd already placed it on a magnet um, that you um, the plate is already appearing on a magnet. It will continue to until I can actually take it back off that magnet. Um, so that's as far as I want to go at, at this for, for this demo. Just hopefully you get the idea of some of the different sorts of steps and how easy it's to build up the process. Obviously, as these processes build, the, these kind of steps get longer and longer. So you can um, zoom in and out just to get a kind of overview and then zoom in for the detail. You've also got this steps. Uh, feature on the right here where you've got a list view of what you can what you can uh, um, what you've built up in the process so far um, so and I can jump through this and, and jump into the particular steps and so on so you know for people who prefer kind of list view of things you can see it quite clearly here uh, and then on each pro each step um, you can actually get to the, uh, the properties to, to kind of fine tune and so on that I mentioned earlier um, so that is kind of, you can imagine, continuing through a process, however long it may be, but hopefully you get the, the idea. But what we've not done so far is actually um, lay out the deck on the system um, and just simply built a, a process kind of on a, on a blank sheet. So if we now go to the next bit, the deck, um, we actually get all those different assets that we're using in this protocol. And I can just drag and drop them onto various places um on here so we've got the lower deck on the on the left and the upper deck on the right um so i can do this process and just quickly drag them on or at the top right there's this magic wand feature um so if i just revert um the deck back to kind of clear it again i can just press this magic wand and it will put things in the optimal places so essentially the software determines based on the process where the best places would be, um, which can save you a lot of time, particularly when you've got the deck completely populated. Um, you can still move things around. So if I use the magic wand and then decide that I want uh, this plate moving to here, for example, I can do that. Um, so it gives you a lot of freedom, but also speed to do it quickly. Um, the next bit in terms of description. So if you're publishing this uh, protocol for others to use, you can enter some text and explanations. So if I just put something like this, um, this is the first part. That will 
be good. All right, there we go. Um, so you can add as much text as you like there, um, just to help others who might might use this protocol. Um, and then there is also a history function which will record kind of all changes to this process. Uh, that's not going to show anything because I've literally just written it. And then finally, you can you can share the protocols. So um, you can either share locally um, on local cloud or on the um, the public cloud, and you can select who you give access to as well, or whether it's to a completely open or whether it's password protected and so on. And you don't have to use the cloud at all if, if you don't want to. It can just be shared locally on, on the network rather than using the cloud functionality. So that's essentially it. Um, you can obviously save that protocol um, and then and call it in um, as and when you need it. Um, if we went on to run that protocol, we'd go into the, um, the execute um, portion so there's a summary of the protocol, which is essentially the first part of, of the bead cleanup. There's the uh, what I just the description that I just put in. Um, there's also um, if you had variables, um, this is just an example that I've put in uh, at the moment just to show this because I didn't select any variables. So I've just kind of set this up to, to give it an indication what it looks like. Um, where you could have things like if it was the number of samples, miniaturization level, and if you wanted to bring data files in. Um, so this purely depends on the protocol um, that you've set up. Um, so a, a user just running a protocol would see this with some description. If there are any variables, could could enter them and can also see the full range of steps that are in the protocol. Um, they then get a list of lab work and consumables required. So they get the uh, the calculated volume of what they're going to need in terms of reagents, um, what labware in terms of um, things like magnetic plates, what plates they need, and um, how many tips and so on. So they um, they get a, a shopping list essentially of what's going to be required for for the protocol. Um, that they could you know you could look into this say the day before just to to make sure you've got what you need uh, available in the fridge and in the lab and so on. Then when you actually come to the instrument to, to set it up, there's a setup and loading sequence. So this um, just takes you step by step through what needs to go where. So in this case, tip box one is going in position L1 on the lower deck, and you can just click through this next uh, next tip box uh, goes on first plate, magnetic block and the final plate, uh, and then what you need in the uh, in the reservoirs. And that's it, the setup is complete. So at that point, you're actually ready to run the protocol um, and you would select execute. And the play button at the top right uh, would be how you start, start this running. Uh, as I mentioned now, I'm not connected to a machine at the moment, um, so I'm gonna do that. Um, but you've got all your steps clearly visible. Um, you've got your time elapsed and the time remaining, um, which will, um, which will be populated when, when you run this. You also have this execution log on the right hand side. So as you run the protocol, it will actually build up um, a log of everything that's that's happened as you go. So if there is a um, if there is a an issue somewhere in the protocol, you'll see exactly when that, that issue occurred and then that can help you actually go back and uh, and uh, work out what, what's gone on and uh, rectify the problem. Um, so that, that's a very brief summary. The final thing I will show you is just in terms of labware definitions. Um, here's the, the plates that are currently loaded. Um, you see the, the uh, pink ones are kind of SPT validated plates that are locked and the, the little lock on the side. So those are hard coded and, and cannot be changed. But you could do file save as if you wanted to do a variation of the plate file. They're also giving unique identifiers. So even if you do that, and you can't save them to the same name and also you can't overwrite the unique identifier. So it helps to keep a, a track of um, any any changes to labware that people may have made, which can be can be quite useful because in some systems you can actually quite easily change the labware names and settings and that can really mess protocols up. Um, so you can um, get the uh, manufacturers um, dimensions um, most of the manufacturers provide those and you can just plug these numbers in and it will will build the image of the far of uh, image of the plate um, or piece of labware and then you can fine tune it and change these settings and so on um, there's also ways to actually uh, use the machine itself to help teach these positions as well so you can add to these you can download new ones from the cloud um, and um, you know it's really quite flexible um, 
And then the final part I'm not going to go into is really just kind of system um, control level for, for our service personnel and also certain elements that are uh, um, accessible to customers, but uh, that's really more applicable when there's a machine connected. Um, so there you go. That's the um, just a very short overview of the uh, Firefly software. And, uh, you know, please do contact us if you have any further questions. Thank you.